Hey, I'm gonna show you how I assemble this ultra toe aluminum folding four by eight trailer kit. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Okay, so I got this kit, it's for business, um, but I thought I'd throw it out there because it's an interesting assembly project. Uh, not motorcycle related, except, you guessed it, I can put motorcycles on it. Um, so that's cool. Uh, it comes in three boxes. I was surprised it was delivered on a freight truck, so they scheduled a delivery appointment and lift gate service didn't look necessary to me there wasn't even a pallet involved but so be it it's a little heavy I think it's 260 pounds the whole total package uh, and the trailer weighs somewhere around that so it's a pretty lightweight trailer but strong I'm told let's put it together twelve inch tires LED lights. Don't be in too big a hurry to throw out the box. There's a nice picture of the finished product on it. Use it as a reference. It does come with a certificate of origin so um, you can register it if your state requires. So don't go throwing this brown envelope away. That's a big old bag of nuts and bolts. I do notice that they're all nylon lock nuts, so uh, they're gonna go on once and stay on. That's good. These guys look sealed well. I mean, obviously you gotta have a lens that you can open up, but uh, other than that, this case is all molded one piece. Um, you know, they look watertight. There's silicone here where the wires go in. I don't know if you know anybody wants to make a boat trailer out of this thing. I'm going to haul motorcycles. But the LED thing is key for me because uh, my car has LED lights, so the circuit cannot handle a lot of amp draw. And these won't draw a lot. And then those of you that live in climates uh, where they salt the roads or there's just a lot of moisture, uh, I'm in Southern California, so I'm not sweating it too much here. Um, this appears to be a baked on paint finish. It's not powder coated. Um, you know, maybe if you're at this stage, you want to take these parts that are steel and take them to a powder coater, potentially. Just an idea, throwing it out there for some of you. Uh, it's not going to matter for me. Rarely rains here and they never salt the roads. In my instructions, this center rail, there are clearly two holes marked on the top of this rail, but there are no rails that have those two holes drilled in them. Referencing this photograph, though, none of those rails have uh, holes drilled at the top of them, so I'm guessing it's not that big a deal. One more thing I'm noticing here is you've got 10 millimeter by 25 millimeter bolts, but also M1030s and M1085s. Uh, there's also some 14 millimeter bolts. So, you know, get to know your bolts ahead of time, or what I'm going to do is get a caliper out and be measuring my bolts to make sure that I'm grabbing, you know, the correct ones for each stage of the way. As you can see, we're going to be tightening a lot of bolts. So, you can do it with one of those, but I do recommend 
grabbing something like this to speed it up and uh, not particularly this brand just uh, don't tighten all the bolts up at this stage Note on these side rails, these need to be toward the front and rear, not in the middle. In the middle, it looks like that. Different. Front is the same as the rear. Next step is installing these uh, stake posts for around the sides and uh, this is the bottom with the tab so tab down in this orientation. Same bolts we used before the uh, 10 millimeter by 25. If you like motorcycles, custom builds, or just like a good story about a man's three-year effort to build a tribute to his childhood teacher, get a copy of Creating Mr. Corton. In it, you'll learn how this man changed this man for the better. How this man took this and built this. How these guys became lifelong friends and enthusiasts of motorcycling and craftsmanship. And how the name Urban Monk originated. It's available from Amazon anywhere in the world that Amazon ships in both paperback and ebook, or you can purchase through a link found on urbanmonktv.com. Get your copy of Creating Mr. Corton today. So there's eight of those stakeholders in total. Four on the front half, four on the back half. These guys are next. They're shaped like an L and they go in this orientation right where you're about to see me put them. Next is these dudes right here and uh, they go here. So with attaching these, they say just to bolt them on using the same 25 millimeter, uh, I'm sorry, M1025 bolts, they don't say whether you tighten them all the way or not, but I am aware of the fact that this is supposed to swivel when you fold this up. Um, so I'm not sure how tight these should be. I'm going to snug them. They are lock nuts, so it's not like they're going to loosen up. Um, it's a guess here. Maybe we'll find out in the end. Yeah, that's pretty snug. I don't know. I feel like I should just loosen that just a notch. Okay, this is where the instructions uh, do not tell you to flip the whole thing upside down other than they indicate it very uh, slightly in the images uh, where you see these post stakes upside down in the picture, but there's no mention of it in the wording.
these guys, which are going to go on in these two middle holes with the 25 millimeter bolts. Here's one of the first problems I'm running into with the kit. You're supposed to be able to hold that nut back there so this doesn't spin while you tighten the, uh, you know, the nut on the other side. And because these are lock nuts, they do have a tendency to want to spin the shaft. And so, you know, but my typical box end wrench or open end wrench doesn't fit in that narrow space. It would have been nice if the kit had come with some just cheap flat stamped out uh, you know it doesn't have to be expensive you see tools like that in kits all the time and they don't include one that I can see if they did uh, if they did somewhere and I've overlooked it I'll mention it by the end of this video but I gotta figure out how I'm gonna hold that from spinning while I tighten the nuts okay so here's what I decided to do I needed something this thin I was thinking they should have provided a stamped out wrench like this, which would have worked fine. I had two of these things in my toolbox. Do not do this. You'll cut yourself, uh, but I did this. So you got to figure out some way to make a 14 millimeter wrench that's going to fit in that space. And this is what I've decided to do to hold that. Um, you know, come up with your own solution. but. They failed in this tool as far as this kit is concerned. So I went pretty snug with that, but not so snug that I can't still move it some. It's tight though. That one's probably a little better. I may just whoop, loosen this just slightly. That's better. So before I put the axle down on the leaf springs, note that little, no, oh, I'll call it a bolt, because it is a bolt, it's just not threaded on both sides and note holes in axle you guessed it they go together when you're done here that plate should be up evenly you know level and the amount of threads sticking out of each of those bolts should be very nearly the same so you know you try to bring that plate up to where you're getting even pressure across all four of the bolt holes um, that's kind of a feel thing but you don't want to have a whole lot of torque on one or two of these and the others are somewhat loose so a couple of things I'll point out for those of you who live in climates where there's snow and salt on the roads. You know, I'm assembling this and noticing right here, it's already paint chipped here and rust beginning to appear. Um, another bit right there, you know, that's right from the factory like that. Uh, this didn't happen on my watch because it hasn't been, I just took it out of the box, you know. Uh, it would not be rusted already if that happened here. So, um, if you see things like that, I'd get out a little black rust oleum and touch it up.
So the light with the license plate light at the bottom and this bracket, which goes on like that, not in these two holes, but you'll see that this has to go up through the uh, frame first. And, and then it goes this way with the red light out. So the wiring is simple enough. You have green and brown, which is white, uh, right stop and tail light. Yellow is left stop and tail light. And then two browns, which are running lights, uh, both in the front and the rear, so they run down both sides. And the white is the ground, which is short, and they provide uh, an eyelet to screw that into, uh, I assume, a good ground somewhere. So, for me, because I'm not going to use those blue couplers, I'm going to take this opportunity to slide my heat shrink tubing up these wires, because once I start putting all of the clips that hold it to the frame, and uh, you know, start really wiring things in, well then I won't be able to get this on. And uh, of course once I solder, that's not the time to put it on. So now is, and I'll just slide these all the way up to the front where the running lights are so that they're positioned around here. Okay, so what I did, um, I did it off camera, I'm sorry, I took a little terminal eyelet like this and soldered it onto that white wire and then tucked it behind this whole light assembly. So the wire is all bunched up behind this black case and it's in this screw up against the rail and that's the ground. And then just repeat on the other side. And frankly, I'm going to use the same technique in the back. Same thing on these rear lights. I put an eyelet on the ground white wire and then just put it behind this nut and that is working. So, Okay, so we've got right and left running light. And we have the rear running lights on the sides and toward the back and we have left turn So it's all working. Just a couple thoughts I'll interject here. Uh, the trailer tracks really nicely behind my lightweight car. That's why I got a lightweight trailer like this. So um, it's good on the road. I, I'm happy with it there. And regarding the decking, be conscious of what thickness of decking material you go with. This is 3 8 inch and that is as thick as you can go and still use the bolts that came with the kit. Uh, other than that, if you go thicker or want a, a heavier duty deck, you're going to need to get bolts that are longer. So that's it. Um, I will say that when you fold it up like this, the trailer wiring moves all over the place and I did follow their instructions as to where to clip it and then it got all stretched and so my advice is don't even clip it until you fold it, then put the clips in. Uh, but, you know, it, it works. Um, and then careful when you fold it up that there's nothing to hold the rear piece up and so have a bungee cord or something ready to tie that together. Um, hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to become an urban monk. Thanks for watching.